are pretty on Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a very brief review of Vladimir Adoyevsky's Two Princesses. I believe the Russian pronunciation is Adoevsky, and ignorant Westerners like me would probably take a stab at it as Odevsky. I may be either one's okay. These are two novellas. The introduction describes the first one as a novella and the second one as a story, but there isn't a whole big difference in length. The first princess story, Princess Mimi, is 66 pages, and the second one is longer. So I think the person who declared the longer one to be a short story and the shorter one to be a novella was smoking something weird. Anyway, this was the last book that I read in the decade, ending December 31st, 2019. I think I finished it on December 31st, 2019, and it was a five-star read for me. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I studied Russian history and Russian literature as an undergrad hundreds of years ago, and I haven't read very much Russian literature since. This was a delight for me, and I think it's pretty accessible for somebody who doesn't know very much about Russian history or literature. There are a few footnotes that help you out, and I didn't really get a whole lot out of reading the forward and the introduction. So I think you can just dive right in. The stories were originally published in 1834. Princess Mimi was published in 1834 and Princess Zizi in 1839. In that era, Russian princesses were a dime a dozen. So these are not like the czar's daughters or anything. There is very little to connect the two stories. There's one brief reference which suggests that the families are somewhat connected, but otherwise they stand alone and make a wonderful compliment to each other because the, the titular princesses here could not be more different. Princess Mimi is middle-aged. They're both middle-aged actually, but Princess Mimi is middle-aged and has never found a husband and has pretty much given up and she instead has settled into a life of spiteful gossip in the high society in which she travels and she is a master of manufacturing and spreading gossip that inflicts the maximum damage on the people she is gossiping about, and that's what the, her story is about. Both stories emerge as Prince Odaevsky, who was a prince and knew of what he's writing here, and for their time, these stories are fairly enlightened about the plight of women that are consigned to finding a husband or, if not, being very unhappy in one way or the other. I wouldn't go so far as to say that these stories are feminist, but they are certainly enlightened for their time. There is a lot of authorial uh, interjection uh, addressing the reader, and I could have done without some of that, but in such short fictional texts, they don't detract overly much. What I loved about the Princess Mimi story was that the plot was so intricately structured that... It's almost like a hall of mirrors in terms of who is sleeping with who and which gossip is true. And the gossip is not true. It misses the mark. And that's the tragedy. And it ends with, and I'm gesturing toward a description of the plot so as not to have any spoilers at all. But two men at the end, in really comic but tragic ironies, one says to the other, and why are we fighting this duel? The Princess Mimi novella also has a preface, smack dab in the middle of it, which frustrates the reader a la Italo Calvino, if on a winter's night a traveler, in a way that just filled me with postmodern joy. I just couldn't believe that he did that. And uh, yes, I did have to endure three pages or something of a rather mundane preface, but I loved that he kept me because it was just right on a cliffhanger of the story such a modern thing to do in an 1830s story about Princess Mimi. Princess Zizi couldn't be more different than Princess Mimi, other than that they are both similar aged and spinsters. The Princess Zizi story is structured a lot differently. It primarily consists of letters that one man is sh letting another man read that tell the story of Princess Zizi. Princess Zizi falls in love with 
a man she can't have. And I don't want to say much more about it because you should just read the story. And then she realizes that her family's financial survival is being threatened and she takes drastic action and is severely ostracized within her high society for acting so mannishly. And I think that's all I need to say about that story other than that the postmodernist magical stroke that Odeovsky took in this story was the very last line. That last line pulls the narrator sharing the letters about Princess Zizi with his friend into the heart of the story in a shocking way that makes you want to go back and reread it. I don't know anything much about Odeovsky. It appears he wrote what could would now be called sci-fi and other kind of fantastical tales that I don't think I would want to read. But these stories were fantastic. You should check them out. This is a Hesperus Classics book, and it's got French flaps and really heavy paper, and it cost, it's under, I think it was under 10 bucks to buy. And I also want to thank Brian of Book Wanting, because he talked about the book on his channel and I ordered it right away and really, really enjoyed it. So, two princesses. Neither of them want to go part-time. Thanks for watching. Oh.